Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. ER Vet is brought to you by Carnivora. Get healthy and stay healthy with nature's nutritional powerhouse. to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm a board-certified emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us today. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to adjust a new pet to an existing pet. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, this is Deborah Lau, president of Carnivore Research International. Did you know that people have used Carnivore for their pets successfully for a wide range of immune challenges for many decades? Here are Carnivore Klein sharing their pet's testimonial. Our little dog developed this lymph problem. We took him in for surgery last year. We noticed a lump on his chest that was a lymph node that was swelled up. So the doctor checked it out and he had it analyzed and everything. And uh, But the chemotherapy lasted for six months. He started developing more uh, lymph nodes that were swelled up. So I thought I'd just try carnivore. We started that and uh, he really responded. The lymph nodes started to go down, swelling did. Then I took him into the vet to have him checked out and there was no sign of any disease at all inside in the internal organs at all. Call 866-836-8735. That's 866-836-8735. Or visit carnivore.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, I'm really excited to talk about how to adjust a new pet to an, an existing pet. I don't know about you guys out there, but I'm a big believer in a multi-pet household. I love having one dog, but I typically prefer to have two cats, if not more. Now, I will say the reason why I like having two cats is because they really find companionship with each other. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a ton of people out there who have lots of dogs together. In fact, my next door neighbor has three dogs and they do a great But my general rule is before you adopt more pets, you always want to make sure that you're abiding by your city rules. So where I live in the Twin Cities, we can only have a total of five pets total. And that's dogs, cats, and other creatures. Why is this important? Because ultimately, we can see some behavioral problems with the more pets that are in the environment. And it's really designed to help prevent hoarders from happening. My general rule is I don't like to have more than six cats in a household. And obviously, this is going to depend on where you live. But one of the things that I think is really important, whether or not you have dogs or cats, is that you make sure that you're taking care of them appropriately and that you're providing the right environmental enrichment. You guys have heard me talk before, but my general two rules when it comes to dog ownership is making sure that you get at least 30 minutes of exercise a day. That could be two 15-minute walks. My other rule is that each dog should undergo two levels of puppy obedience, even if they're an older dog or an adult dog when you adopt them. Why is this important? This is important because even if you feel like you know how to train your dog, you're an experienced dog owner, I really think that puppy socialization, all those smells, all those odors are really important to socialize your dog. Now, I will say that with all the dogs I've ever had, I will usually pick a puppy obedience place based on reviews, veterinary recommendations, and how they train. I personally am a huge advocate of the gentle leader. Now, the gentle leader looks like a muzzle, but it's not. It's designed to basically help prevent your dog from pulling on a leash. So depending on how the training facility trains their pets, I usually am a big advocate for one that uses these gentle leaders. All right, so let's dive right in. What we're going to talk about in this episode is how to introduce two dogs to each other. I'll talk about how to introduce a dog to a cat or a cat to a cat in a future episode. 
But before I begin about how to introduce dogs, please keep in mind that pets are amazing social animals like us humans. But you have to keep in mind that the perfect introduction always happens slowly. It's really important that we introduce dogs to each other correctly because otherwise it can lead to long-term behavioral problems. So let's start with puppies first. If you're thinking about getting a boisterous puppy, think about your current dog. First of all, does your dog love puppies? If it doesn't, you really want to weigh the pros and cons. Now, I'll say that I even thought about getting a puppy as my previous dog was aging. But keep in mind that some dogs don't always love having puppies around all the time. Some dogs may actually resent it. So you always want to make sure to be as prepared as possible. So the first thing you can do is prepare the environment beforehand to make sure that you're giving your existing dog some safe space where your dog can go for some puppy free time. So make sure you set up that environment in the house to begin with. You always want that safe space where that existing dog can go for some loan time. The second thing is I want you to make sure that you are always gonna supervise them and be able to manage interactions between your dogs for some time. The perfect time when you're working from home during COVID because you're home all the time, correct? All right, third thing I wanted to talk about. When you're introducing a dog and a new puppy, again, you wanna set the mood. What's the best way to set the mood? Well, the first thing is not only do you want to have that safe space, but you want to have the right equipment on. When it comes to equipment, I want to make sure that your new puppy has a secure harness and leash on and your other dog has that on too. I want to make sure that before the dogs actually meet each other, that you meet a neutral territory. What does this mean? Well, ideally, this is in a fenced in yard that doesn't belong to you. So what I like to do first is allow the new dog or the puppy to explore a neutral location while they're in their new harness and leash. Now, keep in mind that this new puppy is going to mark. They're going to urinate. They're going to defecate and they're going to leave behind important smells wherever they walk or urinate or defecate. Remember that dogs learn through these smells. So we're really setting up a place for your existing dog to smell the new puppy. All right. Once you let your puppy mark this area, I actually want you to put that puppy away into a secure place. And then I want you to bring in your current dog into that area. Let your dog smell the places where the new puppy was. Don't worry, they're gonna sniff out that urine. Once your dog is relaxed in the new area, you want another human adult to reintroduce the puppy. Don't let them touch nose to nose yet. These are gonna be mini introductions that only last a few seconds at a time. Now, I will say most puppies are pretty small, but if you have a really tiny puppy, like a Chihuahua puppy or Yorkshire Terrier puppy, you actually want to carry them out, but still make sure they're wearing a leash and a harness. You can walk out the larger puppies when you're introducing them. Now, before you just let loose of the leashes, keep in mind that you want the puppy to approach your existing dog, but you also want to make sure they can both get away from each other if they want to or if they need to. I will say that one of the biggest mistakes I see when people are introducing dogs is clutching that leash in a death grip. You want to keep that leash relatively loose. Remember, tight leashes can actually sometimes make dogs feel more nervous. They can feel that tension. So loose leashes, you want to slowly introduce them, let the puppy greet that dog just for a few seconds, and then actually bring that puppy away. That way it's a mini introduction. Now, if your existing dog comes to the puppy and continues to greet them, great, let them. But if your existing dog chooses to stay away, keep the puppy away until your dog starts showing some more interest. You're gonna repeat these little mini introductions in three to five seconds. Now, eventually, we're gonna lengthen the greeting period until your dog is showing signs of wanting to greet. Now, if you don't know what those signs are, that's typically nose to nose greeting, groin sniffing, butt sniffing, play bowing, like doing a doggy down yoga position. Now, keep in mind, if the dogs want to play, fantastic. They're most likely going to get along well. But if your existing dog doesn't show any interest in wanting to see that puppy, that's okay too. Just leash both dogs and maybe go for a parallel walk. That means we're going to walk them right next to each other without them having to interact too much. The more you can do that, the more they'll get used to each other and the more they'll have the opportunity for social interaction. The fourth important tip, bribery. Don't ever forget about bribery. 
During these initial introduction periods, I always like to bring really tasty treats. These are tasty treats that they don't normally get. So my little hint is either freeze-dried pieces of liver or better yet, sliced microwaved hot dog pieces. These are tiny pieces. I'm literally just quartering the hot dog into tiny quarters. I'm microwaving it until they're dry so they can fit in my pocket. And I'm only going to give these treats when good things happen. That's called positive reinforcement. So if you find that the puppy checks in with the human adult, that's a great way of being able to provide a treat. You want to give that treat within seconds. If the existing dog is showing calm behavior, that's great. Give them a small piece of hot dog. This is going to teach your dogs that great things happen when they're behaving and they're calm together. But remember, you have to do it right away. Running into the kitchen and saying, oh, let me get the hot dogs and then coming back to give it to them. Well, too much time has elapsed and they're not going to make the association between the behavior and the treat. Now, of course, as an ER vet, I am going to tell you that I oftentimes will see what we call big dog, little dog fights. Some dogs can be really food aggressive. So you want to make sure that the dogs aren't competing over food, especially if you know that your dog happens to be very possessive of food. We'll continue with this really cool topic right after these messages from our sponsors. Hi, this is Deborah Lau, president of Carnivore Research International. Did you know that people have used Carnivore for their pets successfully for a wide range of immune challenges for many decades? Here are Carnivore Klein sharing their pet's testimonial. My cat had issues that developed in his eye. And six months later, they had to go ahead and scrape the eye. And three months later, the same ulcer came back on in the same eye. So my veterinarian said, you know what, let's go ahead and remove the eye. So that night, I heard the carnivore on advertising. So I said, you know what, I'm going to order this product. That way, at least I tried. They did the procedure. They did all the tests. To their surprise, they said, I don't know what you did, but I'll see you in two months. I, I kid you not. This product saved his eye. Call 866-836-8735. That's 866-836-8735. Or visit carnivore.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. We've been talking about how to introduce a new puppy to an existing dog. And don't worry, we'll talk about how to introduce dogs to cats and cats to cats in future episodes. So far, we talked about how you want to make sure that you're setting the right environment, that you have the right tools like a secure collar or harness and leash, that you're letting them meet in a neutral territory, that you're doing these little mini introductions where each dog can have safe space and get away if they want to. You're also going to use things like bribery to make sure that you're rewarding your dog when they do something positive. Now, one thing that I did also want to mention is you have to be aware of dog behavior. Now, dog body language is really important. And most people are aware of the really obvious ones. But it's important to watch your dog's body language, especially during these introductions, because that way we learn how to speak dog. Now, what are the body language signs that are really obvious in dogs? Usually when dogs are standing alert and holding their tail high and sniffing, that means that your dog is highly aroused and stimulated. This could be good, like they want to play, or it could be bad, like I need to check things out, but need a break and more space. If you notice that your dog's hair on the back of the shoulders and the neck is standing straight up, or if they're growling or snapping, well, that's a pretty easy sign to know that that dog needs more space and isn't happy. Keep in mind, though, that just because your dog is growling or snapping doesn't mean that this dog-to-dog -dog relationship isn't going to work. It just means that your dog needs more space ASAP, so please go away right now, okay? So you want to be monitoring your dog for these signs right away. Keep in mind, we don't use negative reinforcement. In other words, please don't use physical force or scold the dog for growling or snapping at a puppy or another dog, but just make sure to keep them safe, separate them, and make sure everyone has had a chance to calm down before trying again. The biggest mistake I see dog owners making is missing the subtle body language signs. 
You want to make sure to pick up on this. Some of these subtle body language signs include when your dog turns to their side or is sniffing and walking away repeatedly, or if they're leaning or looking away from the new dog. These are subtle signs, but it means that your dog needs some space too. Staring without breaking eye contact for a few seconds or freezing up or becoming stiff when play bowing are also signs that your dog isn't happy. One sign that people often miss is when your dog is licking their lips. That's a sign that dogs will do sometimes when they're hungry, but it's also a sign that your dog has ambivalent feelings and isn't really happy right now. Another sign of ambivalent feelings, if they're shaking, shaking their fur when they're not wet, or even yawning when they're not tired. These are stress releasing or calming signals. And again, these are subtle signs that your dog is really asking for a pause button or asking for more time or more space. Hopefully with all these tips, your new puppy will adjust to your environment immediately and your adult dog or your existing dog will start playing with them. But keep in mind, If after a couple of days of these parallel walks or if your existing dog isn't showing any interest in the puppy or if your pet is repeatedly growling and can't relax, you do really want to consider professional help working with a dog trainer in your area or even a board certified veterinary behaviorist may really help. I'm going to say that I recommend seeking help sooner than later before it becomes severe. When in doubt, I love having multiple pets in a household, you just want to make sure that you introduce dogs appropriately to each other. So again, set the environment, set the mood, make sure you have the right equipment, meet on neutral territory. Don't forget to use bribery. Make sure to monitor your dog's body language so you can help determine if your dog needs a little time out or a little more space. And when in doubt, asking for help from a dog trainer or veterinary behaviorist earlier than later. Hopefully with these tips, Your dogs will be snuggling and enjoying each other's company in short time. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. With that, we're out of time, and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making the show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Our little dog developed this limp problem. We still come in for surgery last year. We noticed a lump on his chest that was a lymph node that was swelled up. So the doctor checked it out and had it analyzed and everything. And uh, but the chemotherapy lasted for six months. He started developing more uh, lymph nodes that were swelled up. So I thought I'd just try carnivore. We started that and uh, he really responded. The lymph nodes started to go down, swelling dead. Then I took him into the vet to have him checked out, and there was no sign of any disease at all inside in the internal organs at all. Call 866-836-8735. That's 866-836-8735. Or visit carnivore.com. That's C-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-A.com. 